Today on BRTV Investigates, a strange tale of two nitrate test kits and the nitrate within. Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of Beers TV Investigates, a weekly YouTube series which explores popular reefing theories, products, methods, what the manuals are missing with a focus on putting them to the test. This week we want to share with you which nitrate test kits are best, not just for your knowledge, but also so we're using the best option available for our ongoing test in the Beers TV Investigates. What we found instead was a journey of how hard it really is to properly test nitrate in seawater, and I think most of you are going to find our ultimate solution pretty interesting. So why does anyone care about nitrate and testing accurately? Well, the reefing community has recommended having as low nitrate as possible for a long time, particularly to help avoid algae issues and browned out corals due to the related increased population of zooxanthellae within the coral's tissue. Well, the general thought process of as low nitrate levels as possible still seems to be the most popular. Within the SPS community, it's been an increasingly common trend to intentionally raise levels in an attempt to achieve better coloration or potentially even growth often in the few parts per million range, but can be as high as 10, and some pretty successful reefers have maintained even higher levels. So which segment of the reefing community is right? Well, likely to some degree all of them, because we've all seen some pretty stunning tanks with ultra-low nitrate, as well as those that run moderate levels or even high levels of nitrate. Some reefers claim almost immediate coloration benefits from dosing small amounts of nitrate. Others claim these increases are only temporary, and others have experienced negative effects. So why does everyone have different experiences with this more advanced topic? I'll give you some direct advice on the right level for you, but it's important that we understand that this wide variance in experiences is very likely because no tank is the same. Starting with significantly different feeding habits and different livestock, which means there's either decreased or increased levels or availability of other nitrogen compounds than nitrate, like ammonia, which the zooxanthellae may actually prefer as their nitrogen source over nitrate. So the higher levels of nitrate can be the result of different processes. In some cases, the nitrate is produced from the natural breakdown of foods, resulting fish poo and breakdown of various nitrogen sources from ammonia to nitrite to nitrate. In other cases, reefers are just dosing forms of nitrate directly to the tank, which is almost certainly going to have different results. Not better or worse in every case, just different. There's also almost certainly huge differences in nitrogen or nitrate demand from one tank to another based on the rate of photosynthesis in the corals and related demand on nitrogen generated from the different light intensities, spectrums, and photo periods. Beyond that, flow rate is certainly a big factor in all this, likely calcium and alkalinity levels, trace element levels, testing methods for all these elements, and finally stability of the entire system, including maintaining nitrate in a specific range rather than just letting it go. So what should you keep your nitrate levels at? My general recommendation is still in the low few part per million range, but above zero because zero likely has a limiting factor on some coral or zooxanthellae metabolic functions. If you're looking to be a pioneer in reefing and want to try out the benefits of higher levels in your system, it's important to set a goal, maintain that level, and a proper test kit's going to be required to do that stably. Which gets us to the heart of today's video. If it's important to test, testing accurately is important as well. So which one's best? The results certainly surprise me. Salifert and Red Sea are pretty much the reigning kings of reefing test kits and NIOS produces the nitrate test kit I find the easiest to perform and read so we added that in as well. However before we get started I made the decision to eliminate the Salifert kit from consideration because once I open the kit the latest version is just too hard for me to read accurately enough to even evaluate fairly. Salifert produces some of my favorite kits for other elements but I don't think any manufacturer is really the best in all of them. In addition to the NIOS and Red Sea kits, we're also going to test the $4,000 plus Hawk DR3900 as well. To test them, we mixed up seawater standard solutions at various points using NIST validated nitrate solutions. So we're not just testing the kits and the DR3900 against each other, but against known concentrations of nitrate at six points, 0, 1, 5, 10, 25, and 50. We consider going higher than that, but to be honest, anyone who's higher than 50 nitrate isn't testing or putting a lot of thought into nitrate, so there's little value. One important note is the DR3900 method is designed for freshwater first, but can also be used in seawater. The chloride in seawater is a significant interference, but the method states that you can create a handful of standards and create a separate program calibrated to seawater to produce accurate results. Another note is unlike the DR3900, which produces a specific number down to the thousandth, the Red Sea and Niles have rather large ranges, which means if I want to read a 10 with the Red Sea, I'm just going to have to gauge where the color falls between the 8 and the 12 points on the color chart and the 5 and 12 range on the Niles. 
We also found that the room lighting impacts coloration by almost a complete shade in some instances, and the accuracy of how the human eye perceives color is different between each person. So this is an average of a couple people looking at the numbers, doing our best to assume real world results. In relation to that, we performed each test three times in three different manners to attempt to achieve real world results reefers would get with these test kits. In the first one, we were intentionally sloppy with the method, meaning we shook the vial for what felt like 15 seconds or one minute rather than using a timer. And we didn't spend much time getting the perfect amount of reagent, really intentionally used slightly too much, and we didn't bother holding a dropper straight up and down for perfect drops. In the second test, we measured everything as accurately as we could by eye, held the dropper vertical, and timed each step with a digital timer. Third test, we went through the effort of leveling the reagent spoonful so they were exact, and made a strong attempt to shake them all in the exact same manner. I'm going to save the suspense and just let you know now that there absolutely was a difference between the levels of effort put into the testing and some were darker than others. However, there wasn't a single test where the difference was big enough to change the reading. That's because if we're testing 10, the shade should be above 5 or below 12, and in every case it was, and almost certainly if you could read it accurately, one was likely reading 7, 1, 9, and 1, 10, but that's just not realistic to do accurately with a human eye and a color comparison chart like this. So end of the day, we took all of that out of the equation for both the visual kits. If it was really close to the color graduation, we called it that number. But in most cases, the color shade fell between the two graduations. So we split the difference between the two. And a measurement that fell between 5 and 12 was reported as 8.5. Well, not ideal. It seemed more accurate than guessing at almost impossible to read shades, which all of us read differently, and also fairly representative of the fact that reefers are putting various amounts of effort into performing the testing procedures precisely. So let's start with our first standard solution of zero nitrate. The red Red C read zero properly and was obviously crystal clear. The NIOS read at 0.5 rather than zero. I've had a lot of experience with this kit and I've come to the conclusion that the color of the reagent powder gives a sample a slight yellow tint which makes it hard to be confident of a zero, but I would personally treat anything that looks like less than one as zero. Moving on to the Hawk DR3900, we did the standard program readings as well as the seawater calibration we did. The first one read almost four parts per million and the calibrated version even worse at around 4.5 parts per million. This is obviously pretty poor performance at reading zero. I have some information to share on that discrepancy, but I'll get to that after all of the readings. The next standard is one part per million nitrate, which came out at 0.87 on the Red Sea kit and super close. This time the NIOS kit read a dead on one. Hawk read the one part per million as 3.4 and the seawater calibration of 2.4, which was slightly better, but both were fairly unacceptable readings to me. Next standard was five parts per million. The Red Sea read a three or two parts per million under the NIOS 3.5 and the Hawk standard program 4.78 and the seawater calibration 8.28, which is again not very desirable for a tool this expensive. The 10 part per million standard was read completely accurate by the Red Sea, and the color match was perfect with their 10 reading. The NIOS averaged out to an 8.5, which was also pretty close at this range. However, the Hawk standard program read a 8.23, and the seawater calibration read a 22.53, which was now what I would call completely unacceptable. With the 25 parts per million standard, the Red Sea came out at 24, just one off. However, that was an average point between 16 and 32, so it's not as perfect as the 24 number suggests. Same with the NIOS reading of 18.5, which was a reading between 12 and 25 in a rather large range. The Hawk Standard Program, 16.65, and the seawater calibration, a ridiculous 49 parts per million. So with the last standard of 50 parts per million, the Red Sea read a 32, the NIOS averaged a 32.5, so both significantly underreported this higher range. The Hawk also read a 28, and the Seawater Hawk calibration is 74. So I think everyone will agree the Red Sea and NIOS kits perform significantly better than our DR3900. So let's answer which of these two test kits perform the best first. Honestly, I would use either, and both were accurate enough for my needs. Each one was slightly better in different ranges, and they didn't perform perfectly in the higher ranges, but the accuracy requirements in this higher range are not as critical, as long as they're consistent, and they were consistent with multiple tests. However, I do think I can give you some valuable information, which will make the decision easy for most of you. 
The Nihilus kit is certainly the easiest to perform, has only two reagents, no dilution steps, and only takes about seven minutes from end to end. So if speed counts, Nihilus wins there. I also find the color graduations much easier to read with the eye than the subtle shades of pink, so another win on that end. The Nihilus is also lower cost and reads from zero to 160, which makes for a pretty compelling offering. The only significant downside is I don't think it reads very well below zero, so it's really hard to know if you're at absolute zero or slightly higher, which is less than ideal for reefers running ultra-low nutrient systems. The Red Sea, however, has a much more detailed window into that sub one part per million range and reads as low as 0.25 parts per million, and the zero shows up completely void of any pink, so it's really easy to identify if you're at a real zero. If you're reading down in the one to four range and want accuracy, the Red Sea is an obvious choice. The Red Sea kit does cost a bit more, however it performs 100 tests rather than 40 of the NIOS, so the initial investment is higher, but the cost per test is almost half. Red Sea also sells reagent refill kits, which are even lower cost and makes it an even better value. I'd also note that the components in the Red Sea test kit comes with are just higher quality, with things like the color comparison wheel, as well as the dropper emits easy to regulate single uniform droplets and doesn't spill when inverted unless you squeeze. However, the Red Sea also takes about twice as long to perform and over 10 to 12 minutes, has three reagent steps, and if your nitrate is over four parts per million, requires a dilution steps of 15 parts RODI to one part sample, which is not only a pain, but also something you need to pay close attention to if you want to get accurate results. End of the day, if you don't care much about the below one near zero readings, test infrequently and the 40 tests will last a long time. I think the NIOS is the easiest to read with the human eye, quickest and the cheapest, the one I'd recommend and what I've been using for the last year. So that said, I'm personally changing to the Red Sea because I can't get past the fact that I want the best accuracy on the low end as I can get. I like the components like the uniform dropper, the sample vials don't leak when you shake them, and it's just better suited to my personal needs from a nitrate test kit. So moving on to our DR3900 results, long story short, our R&D guy Aaron and I have spent countless hours performing hundreds, likely approaching thousands of tests, and working with Hawk support on getting both the DR900 and the newer 3900 to work on nitrate properly. We tried all kinds of methods, procedure changes, patter pills, even these cool AccuVac ampules, which ensure the right amount of reagent and zero contamination. We recalibrated every known way 50 plus times and repeated all this. End of the day, the tech support at Hawk just admitted, well, it works well in freshwater. The single reagent method that they're using simply doesn't work that well in seawater. And one of the biggest issues is it's almost impossible to get a zero reading because zero, one, and two parts per million are almost the same reading. Honestly, as we test all these different technologies, some of this is pretty disheartening, but I'm glad we're putting it to the test. For those of you that don't know, these tools work by measuring the absorbance of light in specific spectrums. The more nitrate, the darker the test solution is and the more light it absorbs. The big issue here seems to be that the chloride in seawater interferes with Hawk's single reagent process. This is all obviously pretty disappointing because a human eye can't read that perfect shade of pink that the hobby grade test kits are producing accurate enough for the BRS TV Investigate series. We really need a high degree of accuracy across all ranges if we want to help with the efforts the reefing community is doing to better understand our reef tanks. At this point, I reached out to some leaders in the testing industry like Lamott, Hawk, and Hannah and told them money is basically no object. I just need an accurate method of measuring nitrate in seawater. It can be a test kit, photometer, probe, anything. Everyone came up basically empty, which I have to admit, again, was pretty disappointing. That day, our head of wholesale, Nick, walked by and asked me if I was using the Red Sea reagents with the DR3900 because I had them open near the unit. I laughed and said no. But after some thought, the Red Sea reagents reliably read all the way down to zero, produce consistent results, and design for testing in seawater. I reached out to Hawk and they told us that the DR3900 is absolutely designed for custom programs like this. At this point, they helped us with the process of creating a program like that, scan the proper wavelength of light for each standard sample, measure the absorption values for each, and create a new program with a proper curve using the DR3900 and Red Sea reagents. Net result is we have a zero to five low range program and a high range program which produced the best results of anything we tested. In this case, the low range program read the zero at exactly zero. The one part per million standard at 0 0.93 or just seven hundredths of a point off and the five at 4.3, which is pretty darn close. 
The dilution program at the high range performed awesome as well. With the shared point of 5 reading 5.53, 10 reading 10.73, 25 reading 27.23, and the 50 reading 52.9. Anyone familiar with how difficult accurately reading nitrate in seawater is will find this degree of accuracy to be pretty impressive. I have to say this was pretty exciting for us because we gave pretty much an unlimited budget to some of the industry leaders and none of them could put together a solution that worked. And at the end of the day, the technology that brought it all home was a combination of industry leading lab grade tools combined with methodology produced by the reefing community and some solid companies like Red Sea. Even more interesting than that, I spoke with the HANA team about the possibility of using the same methodology in producing a HANA checker, which is capable of a similar degree of accuracy in their popular $50 price range. And they agreed there's certainly potential there and now exploring that. It'd be awesome if today's episode resulted in a new checker for the reefing community. They're obviously interested in knowing how many reefers would like to pick one up. I think it'd be similar to the amount of phosphate checkers out there, but let them know by leaving a quick comment here or check out our reef to reef thread where the community chimes in with their thoughts on everything that we shared today. So that wraps up everything we could put together on nitrate testing, helped us identify the best solution we can for nitrate testing in all the BRS TV Investigate series. For those of you that are wondering, we were using the standard program in the Hawk for the few tests that we have running now because it seemed like the best option when every element was considered, but we'll end with a new testing methodology and explore the impact of that in these episodes. As always, if you like what we're doing here and want to make sure that we keep testing, give us a quick thumbs up of support and subscribe because we do this every week. See you next week with another episode of BRS TV Investigates.